my worldview says that competition is the consumer's best friend. Wow. And I always thought that title belongs to regulators like the FDA or the Deutsches Institut für Normung. This quote, however, is from the finance minister of Israel. So, does he have a point? Well, find out in this series about the wonders of capitalism. And today, let's talk about wonder number three, consumer is king with competition. Imagine a world where people like to go to cafes and eat cake. The only problem there is that cake happens to be quite expensive at $4 per piece. Luckily, however, Jessica flies by and she discovers a way to produce cake more efficiently with production costs of only $2. As a good entrepreneur, she puts this idea to practice and opens a cafe, which is quite similar to the others, but twice as efficient. However, she will not sell the cake for $2 because she is also a true capitalist and wants to maximize profits. So she calculates that the profit maximizing price would be $3.5. At this price she would not only make a huge profit per cake but still draw over customers from the other cafes because her cake would be still relatively cheap. Hence she is having a great time but her competitors in turn are really in deep trouble as they're losing more and more customers. They're facing bankruptcy so they can only adapt or they will die out. This is happening in capitalism as it happens in nature. So some cafes actually make all down but others will just copy what Jessica is doing and in the end all cafes will be able to produce cake for two dollars. But how then will the price develop? Jessica's competitors of course want to draw back the consumers so they will lower the price to let's say three dollars. This will work for them but put Jessica in trouble. So she would also have to lower the price and set it at 2.5 dollars. So it goes back and forth back and forth but where will it actually end? To answer this question, let's take a step back and make a few economic assumptions. For example, we shall assume that every cake is of similar quality and that the cafes are all in the city center, so distances don't matter. Then the only thing which matters for the consumers is the price. And under those conditions, we can expect the price to drop very close to $2. This means that companies will make hardly any profit at all. Don't get me wrong here. They will still be able to cover their costs and pay their employees. But after that, there's no surplus. As soon as the cafe will raise the price, it will lose too many customers to the competitors. So that's not possible. It's also not possible to go below $2 because then the cafe would make a loss for each cake they sell. Thus, every move away from $2 would be harmful for the company. And this, while unfortunate for the companies, is great for the consumers because they can enjoy the lowest prices possible at every cafe. This gets actually even better because cafes not only compete over prices but also over quality, friendliness, ambience and so on. As always, let's contrast that to socialism. If you went to a hardware store in the good old German Democratic Republic, you'll probably not see shelves full of tools, but instead a note like this, if we don't have it, you don't need it. They have no incentive neither to be friendly nor to offer wide supply. On the contrary, the more customers, the more work. So employees actually wanted to rather scare them off sometimes. By the way, you can still feel this in some places here in Eastern Germany, but even here it's mostly gone because nowadays companies have to be friendly to the consumers in order to stay in the market. Well, okay, there are some exceptions like collusions and monopolies. By the way, this picture illustrates Standard Oil, once the biggest oil company in the world that made Rockefeller so damn rich. Anyhow, if competition works, no company can exploit the consumers. As soon as companies would do so and make profits, other companies would enter the market and offer the consumers a slightly better deal. 
Thus, competition disempowers companies and so it's really great for the consumers who can enjoy every given product at the lowest price possible. In addition, competition also prevents inefficiencies at all levels. Companies that waste resources, treat their employees badly or pay them too much, well, anything that doesn't work well could lead to bankruptcy under complete competition. Therefore, companies will always get the maximum out of every given resource while minimizing the cost for the kings. Thanks for watching Practical Philosophy. That was the third wonder of capitalism and there shall be three more. Stay tuned, consider subscribing and see you soon.